Focus your attention on the breath and see how it feels. Where do you notice it in the body first? Where does it seem most prominent? You might notice the passage of the air through the nostrils, the rise and fall of the chest. the expansion of the ribcage. There are lots of different places in the body where you can sense the movement of the breath. Whichever area seems most prominent, focus there. And notice that the breath feels comfortable there. If it doesn't, you can change. get longer, shorter, or think of it's becoming longer or shorter. You don't have to make it. Just pose that thought in the mind. What would longer breathing be like? And you'll find the body will breathe longer. What would shorter breathing be like? Heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Explore the possibilities of the breath right now. Think of the breathing as a whole body process and see what that does. To hear a sense of what kind of breathing feels best or what the body needs in terms of the breath. Sometimes it needs to be energized, sometimes relaxed. Get a sense of the breath potentials right now. Because as we're sitting here, we're sitting with lots of different potentials. Potentials in the body, potentials in the mind. And what we're doing is exploring to see which potentials lead to the greatest happiness. Lead to the greatest pleasure. Allow the breath to be pleasurable and also notice what your mind is doing. What potentials do you have in your mind? What thoughts could you be thinking right now? At the moment we're trying to emphasize the thoughts that focus you on the present moment, focus on the breath, and are inquisitive, trying to learn about the breath. Those two factors, thinking on the, about the breath or focusing on the breath and being inquisitive, that's direct a thought and evaluation to the factors of jhana. And they use them to see how you can stay with a breath in a way that feels comfortable. So you're giving rise to feelings of refreshment and pleasure. Then as you probe and explore, you begin to realize that there is this potential right here for the body to feel comfortable from the inside, for the mind to be willing to settle down. There were lots of other potentials you could have focused on right now, but focus on these. On your ability to expand the skillful potentials. And occasionally you find yourself running up against some blockages or pain some places in the body that no matter how skillfully you breathe, there's still going to be pain. Or there may be some chatter away in the mind that won't go away. You don't have to focus on it, just let it be there in the background. But it does impinge a little bit on your awareness. You find yourself running up against old karma obstructions. Unfortunately, the present moment is not totally shaped by old karma. If it were, there would be no point in practicing. There would be nothing you could do. Everything would be determined by something that went before, which of course was determined by something that went before and on back in an infinite regress. This is why the Buddha said, he 
rejected the idea that everything was determined by a creator or everything was determined by old karma. He said, in that case, the practice would be pointless. But it's not pointless. We do have a measure of freedom here in the present moment. There may be some restrictions that come from past karma, but you learn to work around them. And this is a principle that applies across the board in the practice, not just while you're sitting or meditating, but in your activities throughout daily life. You find yourself running up against difficulties that no matter how skillfully you try to respond to them, they're still there. Then you have the choice of focusing on the difficulties to the point where you can't do anything about them. You get more and more entrapped by them. Or if you try to ignore them and pretend they're not there, that doesn't work either. The present moment is a limited moment, but it does have its openings, it does have its potentials. And the wise approach is to admit the limitations, but also to want to explore the potentials for what's skillful. If you have certain responsibilities, learn how to carry them out, but at the same time you're working on the qualities of the mind. What's the Buddhist teachings about the bhāramis or the perfections are all about? Even as you go through your everyday responsibilities, you have the opportunity to develop good qualities of mind. Patience, persistence, determination, truthfulness. Some of us have a romantic notion about the, the ideal situation to meditate. You're off by yourself, no responsibilities at all, totally free to meditate all day long. But even in places like that, you find there are limitations, difficulties. And when the meditation is not going well, what do you have to blame it on? You can't blame it on anybody else, it's just yourself. I know a lot of monks have been out in the forest, and they say sometimes it goes on for months and months and months. Nothing progresses in the meditation. It's just not the case that Going off alone and having no responsibilities is going to solve everything. If you do have responsibilities, remind yourself. You don't have to carry them around in the mind all the time. Your outside work is your outside work, but your inside work can always keep going on. Learning patience, learning to have a good humor about the whole thing. A couple of years back we had a problem in the, the electric room over here. The county inspector came and said, this is totally unacceptable. Everything's going to have to be torn out and redone within just a few days. And so a couple of the Americans came and worked on it and complained the entire time about how difficult it was and how much they were having to do without sleep and just on and on and on. And it wasn't helping the job at all. I kept thinking about how things would, were over in Thailand when we'd have difficulties like that. People seem to have a much better humor. They seem to understand the idea of the perfections a lot better, that even when things are difficult outside or things are difficult inside, you've got the opportunity to develop good qualities of mind. Whatever the situation, you want to figure out the skillful way to approach it, so that you minimize the difficulties and maximize your potentials for freedom. If you're dealing with more than just responsibilities, but the results of past mistakes where you've harmed people or done something really unskillful. The same principle applies. 
you admit the mistakes, you admit the limitations that they place on you now, but then you try to work around them. Don't let yourself be hemmed in by your, your past mistakes. Don't be hemmed in by your past karma, because it doesn't totally shape the present moment. We have this freedom right here, right now. And a lot of the practice is learning how to recognize that fact and maximize it and get the best use out of it. Because all the aspects of the path are possible given whatever the past restrictions are, the past limitations from your past karma are. You can learn how to be generous, you can learn how to be virtuous, you can learn how to develop good qualities of mind. When you've made a mistake, you admit the fact and you say, I'm going to learn from that. I'm not going to repeat that mistake. And that's as far as you have to go. You don't have to punish yourself or hope that somehow by feeling really, really sorry, the punishment will go away. It's like a dog that knows that it's done something bad and it gets on its back and hopes that by lying on its back it's going to appease you. All that you're asked is to recognize the mistake, resolve not to repeat it, and then try to develop goodwill for yourself and for everybody else, for the people you've wronged or the people you might potentially wrong in the future. You spread goodwill to them, you'll be less likely to wrong them. Even just the fact that you're sitting here in, the, in a human body. That has its limitations, but it has its potentials as well. If you're feeling trapped in the body, ask yourself, why are you trapped? Well, you have this perception that it's you or it's yours. You picked up the perception because there were times when it felt useful to identify with the body. It was a means for gaining pleasure. But now you're beginning to realize that Identifying with the body has its drawbacks as well. As you get older, illness comes, pain comes. Even just simply the illness of hunger. And the Buddha said that's the foremost illness, and that's one we all suffer from every day, every day. This is why we have that reflection on the four requisites. If we didn't have food, clothing, shelter, and medicine, body would die. We're born with escaping needs. But at the same time, you can learn how to use the body as a basis for the practice. You can focus on the breath. As you get more and more sensitive to the breath, you can use the breath as a mirror for the mind. got difficult situations with other people, you'll notice there'll be a, a change in your breath. But what can you do to work with the breath in such a way that you're not focused on the difficulties posed by that other person, but you can focus on the fact that you can still maintain your evenness of mind, regardless of the situation outside. And you can use the breath to help you with that. And as you work with the breath, you begin to see the power of your perceptions on how the way you conceive of the breath is going to have an influence on how you actually breathe. If you think of the body as this big solid that you've got to push the breath through, it feels like this big lump of fat sitting here and you're trying to get air through the fat and it just doesn't work. But if you perceive the body as an energy field, when you breathe in, it's just some more energy coming into the energy you're already there. It all flows in smoothly, you're not having to push anything through anything else. It changes the way you breathe. It changes the sensation of the breath. As you think of all the different energy channels in the body connecting together, it gets easier and easier for you not to have to breathe at all.
the different parts of the body not fighting with one another. Your pores feel open, and the breath comes in and goes out. Everything feels connected. Everything is charged with breath energy to the point where the breath gets more and more gentle, more and more gentle, and finally it grows still. And a lot of that has to do with the perception you hold in mind. And then you begin to realize as the sense of boundary around the body begins to dissolve, that your perception of being in the body was something you've chosen to do. You're not really trapped in the body. You trapped yourself. You can focus on space. You can focus on the awareness that seems to encompass everything. And your sense of what's happening in the body is going to change. And that's just a concentration practice. potential for experiencing infinite space, or the potential for experiencing infinite consciousness, it's all right here. If you learn how to ferret it out and make the most of it. So this is how we live with our past karma, accept whatever limitations there are, but also look for the areas that are not limited, to see in which direction freedom lies. So that when you're accepting the situation in the present, it's partly accepting the limitations and learning how to be equanimous about them, but also accepting there are lots of potentials for, for freedom here. And if you really want true happiness, you try to make the most of those. The Dharma is not for people who want to be told that you just have to accept the way things are, and that'll be totally fine. The Dharma doesn't stop right there, because the present moment is not always a wonderful moment. You accept your limitations, but you also accept that there are potentials for, for freedom, potentials for true happiness that can be developed. There's work to be done, but it's good work regardless of the situation. If you keep that attitude in mind, you can practice the Dharma and benefit from the Dharma wherever you are. 